Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, has LeVar Ball's sideshow gotten out of control for the Lakers? Plus reaction to the wild weekend of NFL playoff matchups. And is everything really okay between Tom Brady and Bill Belichick? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. We'll get to all of the big playoff stories in a minute. Cam Newton against the Saints, the Jags against the Steelers. But first, we have to start with LeVar Ball. LeVar is in Lithuania, but he is still making waves in the U.S. This weekend, he criticized Luke Walton again. The Lakers had lost nine straight before last night's game. And LeVar said, quote, you can see they're not playing for Luke no more. Mavericks coach Rick Carlisle came to Walton's defense saying it's a disgrace that ESPN published LeVar's comments. And the big baller brand got an F rating from the Better Business Bureau, the other triple B, because of the volume of complaints they've received. Last night, Luke Walton and Lonzo reacted to all of that. Do you think Luke's lost the locker room? I don't think so. I mean, he's our head coach. We don't play for him. Is this something that you've ever heard from him before that he feels like Luke should not be the coach of the Lakers. It should not be your coach going forward. Uh, I mean, that's just his opinion. You know, uh, he's coached me my, my whole life, so he's definitely gonna have a strong opinion about it. Yeah. That's just what it is. Does it bother you that he comes out and says stuff like that? I mean, says the things that I'm he has fine said. With it, it doesn't bother me. Um, you know, I, I, it, the, my only concern with any of it is for Zoe. Uh, as long as Zoe is fine with it and Zoe can come in and play and be, uh, you know, and it doesn't affect mine and his relationships, then it that it doesn't bother me at all. Shannon, is LeVar out of line for these latest comments? Of course, he's absolutely out of line. The problem that I have is that he lied on national television. He sat right in that chair over there, Skip, and says, going to the Lakers, my son goes to the Lakers, I'm, he's done with it. I've done him. I brought him this far. He's going to Mag the Lakers, Magic Johnson. He did. The greatest point guard to ever live. What can I teach him? Yep. My job is done. Hey, take Zoe over. He can't keep his mouth shut. Just like that article said, I don't know if it was Sports Illustrated, but what the coach said, he would tell the player one thing, and LeVar Ball would go right behind his back and tell him to do something else. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Now you're getting an opportunity to see who and what LeVar Ball... He... Two things can be true. I support LeVar Ball, his, his ability to try to be an entrepreneur. He wanted to do his thing with the shoe game. He didn't get the help or, or didn't have the insight or the input from Nike or Adidas or Under Armour. So he said, you know what? I'm going to build my own shoe. Hey, I'm jumping on both feet, Skip. Let me get me a pair of those things. When they get here, okay, fine. I'm good with it. But you're going too far. And I've said this several, several times. I played professional sports for 14 years. Mm -hmm. Skip, when a parent, a family member, a significant other, or someone close to said player says something, Mm -hmm. People assume, be it fair or unfair, especially those that's in the locker room that is coming from said player that's in that locker room, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to cause a problem. And he doesn't get it. This is not about, no. How does what, he, how does what, what he's saying make Lonzo better? You can't talk your son into being a better player. He's going to be what he's going to be. Now, you can get all these likes and mentions and all that other stuff, and a lot of people love what you're doing, La uh, LaVar. They do. But there's a problem with it, and you just don't seem to see it. Now, it was reported that the boys were supposed to go to a, with the team this weekend. The team wouldn't allow cameras. The boys didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Now, I said, as soon as this Facebook thing's wrapped, the boys going to be back here in the States. I'm going to stand by that. Skip, I, I, I don't get this. He, he's... He's turning Lonzo. Now, maybe, maybe there's some truth to it. Maybe there's not. But what do you think the players, they're looking at Lonzo like, man, I can't tell you anything. That we is correct. We just got rid of a guy that yep. couldn't keep his mouth shut. Yep, he, and he, he He in Brooklyn now. Yep. And this is the same thing with you. Your father keep yakking and yakking and yakking. Yep. It's always somebody else's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't have a problem. If, see, what you're starting to see. As long as things are going Lonzo Ball in his son's way, yep. you will not hear a word from LeBar. Mm -hmm. But the moment it does not go in his favor, coach said, nah, Melo ain't shooting 50 times. Okay, come on home, son. Home school. Mm. Um, you, go to, you go to China, you steal something, you're going to be suspended indefinitely. Heard uh, 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 Jello on television. Well, they could they could have given me some, you know, determination of how long the suspension was going to be. Mm. Well, you suspended until we tell you you can come back. You should have thought about that before you tried to take something that didn't belong mm -hmm. to you. Well, you not try to. You accomplished what you did. But Skip, 
We just had, what was it, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, that they had a conversation with Lonzo. I mean, LeVar, he said it. Yeah, they talked to me, but I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to say what I want to say. At some point in time, this is not going to end well, Skip, because do you believe Lonzo Ball will be as good as Boogie Cousins? Because Sacramento got rid of Boogie Cousins, and Boogie Cousins right now is 24 and 14. Yep. So at some point in time, this distraction yep. that's outside of the locker room mm-hmm. becomes so much of a nuisance. Mm-hmm. Let somebody else deal with it. But I'm trying to figure out who wants to deal with it, Skip. Mm-hmm. Because we're talking about it not only because it's mainly because it's the Lakers and because of his son. And LeVar wants to live his life through his sons because his sporting career did not turn out like he wanted it to. Mm-hmm. Don't give me this bull jive. He's so proud of his son. Hell, 98, 99% of the parents are proud of their kids, but they don't carry on like this. Mm -mm. This is unacceptable behavior. Mm -hmm. I don't care if he builds a $10 billion shoe brand. The way he's carrying on, the way he's acting is unacceptable. Yep. All that is extremely well said. So bottom line, what's LeVar going to do next? Pull Lonzo off the Lakers and take him to Lithuania? <laughs> what, what, seriously, is that where we're heading with this? And I got to, before I launch into the question Joy asked us, I, I got to get this off my chest. I have defended LeVar, sort of hung on and defended LeVar, because I love the fact that he has been a good father to these kids. Now, you can argue he's being too good a father to the kids, mm-hmm. but so many of these kids didn't have a father. I didn't have a father at home. A lot of people I know didn't have a father, so right. I, I admired that part of it, and I admired the fact that LeVar Ball had the guts to try to beat the sneaker establishment at its own game that it sort of owns, and yet... This better business, as you said, the other BBB brand and the one that you can't mess around with, The right? original the, Triple the, B. Yes, the Better Business Bureau. Now we have the report that it has given LeVar's big baller brand an F, a flat out at the worst it can give because they've had 41 negative reviews, zero positive, and 33 formal complaints of customers who either didn't get their orders or got the wrong items in their orders. That's just no go. Can't do it. You're, you're lo- you, you have to play the game the right way if you're going to beat the establishment at its own game. Correct. Right? Correct. And you did get... I did get the shoes. You, you got yours. But you're Shannon Sharp and a lot of Joe Smiths out there, I guess, <laughs> are getting messed around. So it looks like LeVar is failing on the Better Business Bureau end of this deal, Right. Mm -hmm. So, now we get back to Joy's question. I slept on this. I did a Facebook Live about it last night. It just sort of tears my guts out because you know and I know that I do love me some Lonzo Ball. Mm -hmm. And the reason I love the kid is because he's the flip side of the father. He is unselfish to a fault. He seems to have high character for all I can gather. We had him on the show once. And he always says and seems to do the right thing. Correct. And I still believe in him as a player, though I've said many, many times, too many times on this show, where are you, Lonzo? You seem unplugged to me. You seem like you're not into it on a nightly basis. I don't see the energy. I don't see the engagement. I don't see the aggressiveness on a minute-to-minute basis. And I've wondered about it, but I still defend him because he's still averaging 10 points and 7 rebounds and 7 assists, not what what people expected, but still decent. He still ranks number one on this team in the defensive rating of individuals. He's number one, and he still leads this team in rebounds and obviously in assists. Okay, so all those I I cling to, even though I can't say that he's been a big hit because he has not been a big hit. Right. So, is there always some truth in things that LeVar Ball says publicly? Yes, mm-hmm. seriously. Mm-hmm. There's always some truth, enough that that makes him the lightning rod that he is because he's willing to say or do what no one else will say or do. Right. And he's not a complete fool. He, he's not Because if he were a fool, we would have all dismissed him long ago and said, okay, that's enough of that, right? right? Mm-hmm. But his son is the second pick in the draft, or was, and I got to tell you, from my heart, I don't love the way Luke Walton has coached this team. I think this team is far better than its record. And it really struggled without Lonzo because it lost six in a row and it had lost nine in a row. And I'll be honest, 
I don't love the way Luke Walton has handled Lonzo because from the start, he has been hard on Lonzo, but you could argue, I'm, I'm open to arguing, hearing your side, he should have been hard on him because yes. he was in a terrible shooting slump. Mm -hmm. And so he was yanking him quickly. I don't know what this substitution pattern in, is, but mid-first quarter, usually Lonzo's out. Mm -hmm. So he kind of breaks a sweat, and then he's on the bench. And he might be on the bench for a whole nother quarter until the middle of the second quarter. Right. And six times this year, Luke Walton has set Lonzo Ball on the bench for the entire fourth quarter. Is that fair? Is that right to the number two pick in the draft? Is he just barely has turned 20 years of age? Is that the right way to let him grow on a young team? Well, I think not. So I don't like it. And I've said that several right. times. Okay. And obviously, the father really, really doesn't like it. So you know what just happened? The father just called for Luke Walton's job, and we're, we're not quite to halfway through Lonzo's rookie season, right? right? We're yeah. barely into January. We still got a long way to go, and he is calling for this coach's job. Well, this makes it virtually impossible for the kid to operate. So I already said, he came into this game with the biggest target painted on his back by his father of any rookie in any sport ever, mm -hmm. where night after night, he, basically, LeVar, the father, is calling out star and all-star point guards who are going to take it out on Lonzo to take it out on LeVar. So he's making it virtually impossible for his son to succeed. And I thought Lonzo came out last night with the weight of the NBA world on his shoulders, tight and tentative. Mm -hmm. Well, is that pretty predictable? Yeah, because the father just called for the coach's job. And at the shoot-around, we just saw the sound from Lonzo, and he's kind of mealy-mouthed about it. Well, that's his, that's, his, that's his opinion. Well, what's your opinion? Exactly. What, when are you going to have an opinion? When are you going to take a stand? It's hard for me to believe, Skip, that he was this, this outspoken. LeVar was this outspoken in high school, this outspoken in the NBA, but he was quiet in college. Yep. Now, let's, take, let's say for the sake of argument, he was quiet in college. You know why, Skip? LeVar Ball, Alonzo, was the best player on UCLA. Many thought he was the best player in college. So he was nothing, there was nothing mm -hmm. to talk about. He's not even close to being the best player on the Lakers. We know he's nowhere in hell the best player in the NBA. So now LeVar has to talk him up. Skip, and they ask uh, Alonzo, well, that's his opinion. I can't tell him what to say. Bull job, you can't. Because let me tell you a story. I had a mom who used to come to my game, and she up there, yet, oh, he's sorry. He can't catch it. He can't do that. You know what I did? When we got home, I said, Mom, look here. You talking about yeah. those guys that are sorry and can't catch and can't do this? Mm -hmm. Those are my teammates. When you go back to Chicago, no. I got to deal with them. Now, I will not hear this anymore. Mm -hmm. Guess yep. what? My mom up in the stand clapping and cheering. Go ahead. You get them, baby. Yeah, exactly. So don't tell me what you can't do. Yeah, I agree. Because at the end of the day, when you home or you in Lithuania, I go to practice with these guys. Mm -hmm. They looking at me side out for something you said. That is because correct. Because they think I told you something. And that's why the, the teammates have been called out by LeVar, too, because he's saying they're all quitting on Luke Walton. Well, let them speak for themselves. Right. right? What, what if they're not? What if they like playing for Luke Walton? And maybe a lot of them do. I don't know. This is what I have a hard time understanding. Luke Walton, when Steve Kerr was going through his back injury, Coached the first 43 games for the Warriors. Yep. They went 39-4. and four. Steph Curry was an MVP. Had nothing but glowing things to say about Luke Walton. Um, Clay Thompson, who's an all-NBA player, uh, all-star. Yep. Draymond. Now you got guys that have accomplished nothing, and they don't respect Luke. No, you don't respect him because he doesn't listen to you. He doesn't play your son the minutes that you think he should play. Mm -hmm. You don't let him. He doesn't let your son have the green light like you think he should have it. It's not they don't respect him. They don't respect you because you're running your mouth. Hold on, who are you? You, don't, you coach your son AAU team. Mm -hmm. Now you think you read all back of Pat Riley? Now you know more about what the Lakers should do than the people that's there every day. Look, as long as we continue to give him oxygen, look, you can't be mad at ESPN, you can't be mad at these writers, and I don't want the writers to lose their credentials because we got enough of trying to suppress the, the, uh, the media going on in this country right now. I don't think the uh, reporters should lose their credentials, Skip. 
Cause, yep. Because that's what this is. You're talking about Rick Carlisle. Right. Who, who had to speak up as the head of the coaches association. No. So he had to take a stand against what he called this loudmouth, blowhard LeVar Ball. And why, he, he ripped ESPN. Why would you print these comments? Because it's a news All, organization. It, it's because it's a news organization. <laughs> and maybe it's because he's the father of the second pick in the draft. Yeah. And he has talked his way into becoming an international celebrity. Yes. He's a celebrity in China. He's a celebrity now in Lithuania. Correct. In Eastern Europe. So wherever he goes, everybody knows LeVar Ball. But what put him on the map was that his number one son was the second pick in the draft. Correct. Without that, he's got nothing. Absolutely. Because that's the only credibility he has because he's losing credibility with his new sneaker brand. Right. right? So the point is, Rick Carlisle actually validated ESPN printing those remarks by, by lashing out. Because would, would he lash out at normal quotes from some mother or father of any no. other player? He wouldn't care. No, but they I, come and they go. I would like to think a normal mother or father would be more respectful and to understand yeah. that my son has to go to work with this team, with those guys in that locker room every single day. And when something comes from me, here's come from my mouth, Players in that locker room think, I'm talking to my dad. I'm pillow talking to my dad. Yep. Maybe one person said that. But the mere fact that La LeVar is talking, they think it came from Lonzo. I agree with that. And, and he could be trying to build in an early excuse for his kid who hasn't played up to anybody's no. expectations yet. And yet, in the big picture, I'm still convinced. I, I believe in Lonzo. I believe in his future. I believe he will be a transcendent passer because I don't see anybody who can pass the ball like him in his generation. I believe he will not finish his career in a Lakers uniform. Well, that's possible. But the point is, I don't think we're ever going to see just how great or good or average Lonzo Ball can be until he gets LeVar out of his picture. Yeah. Because I don't think he th – this is literally stunting his growth with his organization, with his teammates. He's The dad is making it impossible for the kid to play and if the kid had put up huge numbers early like the, the second game of the year was at Phoenix the right. 29 point game he's had a couple what's he up to two two or three triple doubles yeah. if he kept putting up triple doubles every night well then you could say well maybe he has a case against the right. coach but he hasn't lived up to his end of the bargain or yet. if he's playing like Donovan Mitchell in Utah you know, like or that. if he's playing like Jason Tatum well, in Boston you know? now we got or, 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 or Dennis Smith Jr. now skip now yep. we can have this discussion we can have but this by any metrics or any analytics mm -hmm. Lonzo Ball has not played well this year. And, He's not shooting well from the floor, the no. three-point line, the free throw line. So he hasn't played well. No, not well enough. And yet I remind our younger uh, viewers who might know of that Magic once upon a time fired his coach. That was into the third Magic season. So it was his third pro season. Mm -hmm. he, filed, uh, he got Paul Westhead fired. He won't like me saying that because he says, I, I didn't have anything to do with that. But we all know he did have yeah. something. It was 11 games in. But he had won a championship with Paul Westhead in his rookie year, in and which he played center in the finals in place of Kareem. What did he have, 42, mm -hmm. 15, and 7? Yeah, so he had a ring on his finger. <laughs> yeah. And then the next year was a little bit of a disaster because they lost in the first round in Magic's second pro season to Correct. the Houston Rockets when it was best of three. They lost in three games Correct. and were eliminated early. So now they're 11 games into the third season, and boom, <laughs> Westhead is gone. It was a great move because Pat Riley came out of the broadcast booth and was elevated into head coach, and the rest is NBA dynastic history, right? Right. Okay, so now speaking of dynastic history, so the other thing that really offended me was that LeVar spoke out about your man, LeBron James. And he, the quote is, LeBron's coming to L.A. I know he's coming to L.A. You do? I don't think you know. You don't know anything. And, and furthermore... He made, uh, once again, there's always some truth to what he's saying. He made an interesting case that for LeBron to catch Michael Jordan, it would look good on his resume if he could go to a third team and win a championship. Well, right now, that's a long way away with these Lakers. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, so the point is, let's say that LeBron in the back of his mind did have it as a real possibility. I just might go to the Lakers next year. Well, the father is going to turn him away because we know that LeBron doesn't have any use for LeVar because he spoke of his kids exactly. and, and how hard they're going to be, especially LeBron Jr., to overcome LeBron Sr. and, and the, the expectations. And, and the then he's going to talk about, yeah, I can see Lonzo yeah. and Melo, the two and the three. Really? Yeah. Do you think, Le Skip, this man, LeBron James, is going through great lengths? He, he said his second son would be a starter on this team. Yes. Right? LeBron is going through great lengths, Skip.
to make sure his reputation is pristine. Mm -hmm. And you can see this now. He going to Lavar would try to capitalize on it. Yeah, we got all the L's. LeBron, Lamelo, Lonzo, mm -hmm. all of them coming. Yeah. Lagello. Yeah. So Le so he said just keep Joseph Randall and Larry Nance Jr. as the two rebounders and 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 get rid of everybody else. So, so he's already Brandon? just blasted the rest of the roster. So what, so what is Brandon Ingram supposed wow. to think? Wow. What is Jordan Clarkson supposed you, to think? You tell me. What are you thinking today about those quotes? Get rid of us? Josh. Man. Hey, hey, you, you want to talk about side eye in the locker room? Man, look, at, I don't know how they look. I don't really know the, the makeup of basketball players. But let me tell you how Shannon Sharp would handle this. Whew. If Lonzo Ball was in my locker room, mm -hmm. bruh, tell your pops to keep my name out, out his, his mouth. mouth. Mm -hmm. We don't want any problems. Mm -hmm. I don't want no problems. He doesn't want these type of problems. Mm -hmm. Now, the next time he says something that I deem that's inappropriate, he and I gonna have a conversation. Yep. He's not gonna like the conversation. Yep. That's the way you gotta handle that. So, Lonzo, if you can't handle him, mm -hmm. I'll step to him and take care of it for mm -hmm. myself. So I'm, gi I'm giving you the heads up, because mm -hmm. I don't want no problems. It does make me wonder what the Lakers' plan was because while Lonzo is still a rookie and developing mm -hmm. and it's just still a little time to decide what he is, LeVar has come as advertised. Mm -hmm. Yes. This, this shouldn't be a surprise to but anyone. He told, but he told, he sat here and said, hey, Magic. I think he can LeVar, has, man. Yes. LeVar yeah. has said a lot of yes. things. Yeah. LeVar has said a lot of things. Yeah. Now it's shifted because we know what LeVar is. This is on Lonzo. It's on Lonzo. Uh, unfortunately, He's it's come to down to that. Own man. Yes, yep. it's yep. come down to that. No mercy. The Saints beat the Panthers 31-26 yesterday and will now move on to face the Vikings. Drew Brees threw for 376 yards and two touchdowns in the win. Cam Newton led a Panthers comeback, throwing two fourth-quarter touchdown passes to cut the Saints' lead to five, but he was sacked on fourth down in the closing seconds to end the Panthers' season. Let's take a listen to Cam after the loss. No, I just got to be better. You know, I'm not going to take the coward way and, and point somebody else out. You know, I feel like plenty of times this year, it was up to me. Uh, I do believe I am the leader of this team, and the team goes as I go. Uh, that comes with a lot of responsibility. We didn't come here, you know, just to, to get a shot. We, we, we came here to win, and that's what we didn't do. Um, you know, kind of caught a sense of a lot of people just being just satisfied with being in the playoffs. Um, but either here or there, you know, we'll, I will learn from this and, uh, you know, I will get better from it. Shannon, how would you grade Cam's performance? Skip, if they'd won the game, I'd give them an A, but I can't give you an A and a loss, but I'm going to give him a B++ because I think, I thought Cam played one of his best games of the year. That's including going to New England, beating New England. Mm -hmm. That includes going to Detroit, beating Detroit. Skip, he threw the ball yesterday with conviction. He didn't turn the football over. Early in the ball game, he has a touchdown. He throws the ball, one of mm -hmm. Cam's best throws of the year, mm -hmm. and Clay drops it. Mm -hmm. Graham is going to drops on the field for a 25-yard field goal and misses it. Yep. Two plays later, Tay again has the ball 80 yards into the end zone. Skip, you can't throw the ball any better than this. Guy runs a speed out. Look at Cam. Drive the ball. I mean, this is perfect. Skip, that's perfect. Kalen Clay is on his fifth team in the NFL. So well, he's just been bouncing around. He's just some guy that they had to throw in because they don't have another guy. Because they don't have Ted Ginn Jr. anymore. Exactly. Right? And they're, they're, yeah. that's the problem. That's why he's been on five teams. Yeah. When you do make plays like this, especially Correct. in playoff moments. Yep. And then Devin Funches, Skip, he has to make that play. He just looks hurt to me, but go ahead. You ask, all you ask, quarterback, don't throw it out of bounds. Quarterback, don't throw it out of the end zone. Give me a chance to make a play. Now, I believe Devin Funches is a better number two receiver than a number one. Yep. But they got rid of Kevin Benjamin, so he assumed that mantle of being number one. So yep. let's just say for the sake of argument, he's two at worst. Mm -hmm. A one or two receiver. Got to make that play, Skip. To play in the end zone. Yes. It looked like he saw the ball and the DB yeah. did not. It, the, and he just didn't even make a play for the it. The DB overran yeah. the play. Yeah. And he says, well, I lost it a light. That's your fourth time playing in New Orleans. <sighs> you played there the first two years and you played two games there this year. Wow. So the light shouldn't be an issue. It was a good throw. It, it's a touchdown throw. It's situation. I, like I thought, because I was rooting for the Saints, I thought, that's it. Ball game. You ask the quarterback mm -hmm. to give you a chance. And when he gives you a chance, you need to make a play for it. Cam played well enough. He did mm -hmm. some unbelievable things. And people are like, well, what, what about they were one for four in the red zone? 
Mm -hmm. He didn't turn the ball over. No. Nope. You got points. And that was been the problem. When Cam turns the ball over one a few times, they're 11 and one. Mm -hmm. More than once, they're 0 and 4. So gave them a great opportunity. Graham Gano makes that field goal. Now instead of needing a touchdown to win, all you need is a 25 yard field goal to win. Yep. I thought Cam threw the ball, like I said. I'm glad he said what he said. Cam understands once you've gone to the Super Bowl that he didn't win. But just getting to the playoffs and having a good showing is not good enough for him. Cam is good enough to play like he played yesterday often. And why, the reason why so many people, and I'm so hard on because he's immensely talented. There's not a throw that he can't make. He's big, he's physical, he's, he can run, he's smart with the ball. But sometimes he gets careless with the football, which puts his team in harm's way. Mm. And like he said, you don't have to think. You are the de facto leader of the Carolina Panthers. Mm. And when you play well, they play well, they win. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, they don't, and they lose. So I thought Cam deserved a B-plus because he played one of his better games. Yep. The only thing is that they didn't get the outcome that they had hoped for. They did not. But he needs some help. If I'm Carolina, I'm going to get me a receiver. If there's a number one receiver available in free agency, if there's one in the draft, I'm going to get me a free agent, a wide receiver. I'm going to get me a running back to, to go with Christian McCaffrey. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get me a playmaker on the edge, either corner or safety. Yep. Carolina be back in business again. So, I wrote down the same grade you just gave Cam. I wrote down B+. Plus. But I also, before I go on, I got to give Cam a D for the interview we just saw. Because at the end of it, you, you can't do that to your teammates. I did not love that. Because what he said that last line was... I caught a sense, and he's meaning in the locker room, of a lot of people who were just satisfied to be in the playoffs. So he's saying between the lines, I came here to win, but a lot of people came here just happy to, to be here. Well, I don't think you could do that to your teammates because it won't resonate well through the offseason. No. We've seen him do that before, and they don't like it. And he said, I will learn from this. Well, I hope he learns from this, from, from that comment. Skip, I... What the hell, Cam? You went down there with the Panthers. What is this? I, you will learn. So nobody else, gonna, nobody else is going to take anything from that loss. I guess loss. not. I okay. guess not. So to, to your point, I said all last week because I want to take some pressure off Cam. I just thought it was Cam or bust. Greg Olson played bigger and better than I thought he could. As he's come back. Yeah. He's still got a screw in his foot. Right. He's wearing one size shoe bigger than the other size. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he started looking like Greg Olson again. Yes. Because he had that's 12 targets, eight catches for 107 yards. That was big time yes. to me. And so uh, you did have that weapon yeah. back. You got little McCaffrey loose one time right up the middle, and he was gone. Yes. I thought the DB was going to catch him because I don't <laughs> think he's as fast as some people think. But that was 56 yards, and all of a sudden we got a ball game. Fast. He's more quick than fast. I agree. <sighs> Funches four for 79, but he's struggling. It looked like he's got a shoulder injury. I don't know. Maybe he couldn't. He couldn't get one arm loose to, to go get the football. But again, Cam played well enough to win the football game, which brings me to the team that both of us picked going into this tournament for our new pick since I had the Cowboys, <laughs> and who'd you have? Seattle. So, Seattle. So we both like the Saints, and now I don't love the Saints anymore because no. I was a little to a lot disappointed. I slept on it and kind of slept it off. I'm, I'm still going to say the Saints' glass is half full. Last night I thought it was half empty. They did lose Andres Pete, who's a big stud left guard of theirs yes. at six feet seven inches tall, and he fractured his fibula, and he is history. So, all of a sudden, they're down one of their stud offensive linemen, and it looked like it hurt the rest of the game. He was gone early in the second quarter yes. because the big shock to me was they couldn't run an inch, nope. basically, right? Nope. That They wound up with 22 rushes for 41 yards. Where was Kamara? He's, he's going to be the offensive rookie of the year, just like Marshawn Lattimore on defense is going to be the defensive rookie of the year. So, yeah. you got two big pops, yes. with two new players, but there was no pop from him. And Mark Ingram was nine for 22 yards. And, and I'm saying, where are those Saints who were going to be sort of 55-45 balanced? They were actually 60-40 yesterday, but they just couldn't run a lick. And if you can't run a lick going up to Minnesota, and they're, did, they're just going to have you for lunch or dinner or what. And right? that, that crowd noise, Ooh. they start blowing that horn. And Man. the one thing they can do, they can rush your quarterback. They can. So... Speaking of that quarterback, I got to tell you, I thought Drew Brees was sensational yesterday. He was that, that was about 
that was vintage Drew Brees that I didn't see all year. He, he was very efficient all year because he set the all-time record, 72% completions. But I didn't. I, I thought I saw some arm strength waning mm -hmm. a little bit. But yesterday, even though he can't, he, he's got to like get a running start to throw at sixty yards. But but <laughs> otherwise, javelin throw he's everything. throwing javelin throws. <laughs> but but other than that, he was really good. Twenty three of thirty three. That's seventy percent for three seventy six. I don't know how you can ask a whole lot more from him. But again, it was old Saints football. It was old Sean Payton, Drew Brees. We're just going to throw you out of our building, you know, and it is their building with their home crowd. Well, I, I can't love that going to that other loud building. But that's right? a great luxury to have, Skip, yeah. when you shut down Kamara and Ingram to have this guy to fall back. Now, remember, he has three of the four greatest completion percentage seasons in NFL history. Whew. He's thrown for 5,000 yards on five different occasions. Yeah. So statistically, he might be as good as we've ever seen in the NFL when you just look at numbers. Yeah. So that's a great luxury, and that's why we liked them, because they can run the ball with Kamara and Ingram. But think about it. Well, we shut that down. Okay, you shut that down. You want Drew Brees to throw the ball 30-plus times for almost 400 yards? Because that's what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe he will have that kind of success because what the Minnesota Vikings do very well, they jump off the ball. Mm -hmm. They will come get your quarterback. Yep. And remember, opening day, what happened? They got the doors blown off of them. But their defense hadn't come together yes. yet, and, and it was Sam Bradford just picking them to pieces. Look, Kamara has been – that was Adrian Peterson's coming home night. Yes. And now he's obviously out, and Kamara is in. So, is, is he that guy or not? Because you got to get him the ball more. So, he touched it 10 times for 23 yards rushing, but three passes for one yard – you, you got to figure out how to get him loose yes. against the he Vikings. He needs to be in space. He's the difference maker, yes. right? Yes, he, he's the game that – he's the guy – I mean, he's the kick returner. So, we've seen him take one back to the house. He's a guy that the more he touches the ball, the more electric he becomes. You want him to have the ball in his hands in space. And so, he'll get his opportunity. They did a great job of trying to neutralize him. But we'll, I, I believe Sean Payton will come up with something. He'll find a way to get him in space, get him matched up on Barr, get him matched up on Kendricks, and mm. see if he can have his way with those guys. Mm. Give Carolina – Carolina defense not a slouch now. I mean, they, they're not statistically what they was in 2015. Mm -hmm. But Kinkley mm. – You mean the poor man Sean Lee? You know what? He is. I saw Stop. it again Stop. yesterday. Did you see him on the goal line? Shoot Stop. and just swing and miss? Did Stop. you see that? The two best uh, linebackers uh, that play that position, uh, one's in Seattle, the other's in Carolina. No, the best one is in Dallas, and unfortunately Dallas is not in this Don't tournament. do that, Skip. Well, it's Don't do that. the truth. Nobody's going to say that Luke Keekley and he's Sean a, Lee are equal. poor man. Yeah, okay. But well. – they can still they can get out there too. Now Kwan Short and all those guys, they can yeah. get to the quarterback also. So let's not look, you know, look past them. Uh Thomas Davis was still making some plays. I just think they need a corner or playmaking safety. The, uh, Earl Thomas, one of those type guys. Mm. And they definitely need a wide receiver and a running back skip. Mm. They need a number one, true number one receiver that can bump Funches down, and mm. everybody gets bumped down a peg. Yeah, Because if Funches is number one, that means Kalen uh, uh, Clay is a number two. He's not Or maybe two. he's out. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah, he, he doesn't make be, it. He yeah. should be three, four yeah. at, at best. Right. So I didn't love the way the Saints celebrated just a, a wild card win at home. It looked like they just won the Super Bowl. It's been Bowl. so long, huh? those kids. Well, I guess so. But they got their broom out. Sean Payton's in the locker room, waving the broom and throwing it in the middle of the big celebration. I, I don't know. I, I wanted to hear them say, we got business to tend to. On to the next. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay, you want a playoff game. I mean, that wasn't the game to get you to the Super Bowl. Yep. You want to celebrate that mm -hmm. AFC, NFC yep. Championship game? I'm all for that. But So I am hanging in. I'm still going to stay with the Saints. I, I'm going to stick by I, – I said they're going to win the NFC, which is – eminently winnable by just about anybody, yeah. including the Falcons or whoever yeah. else you that, want to throw in there. That's what you better mm -hmm. be careful mm -hmm. of. So are you a jumping bandwagon uh, already? Yet, not yet. I not think yet. you are. I think you just did. I, I, will, I feel comfortable in saying I'm taking the Falcons over the Eagles. Okay. And I believe you I will also. I think you're comfortable in saying you're going to take the Vikings over the team you picked last week to win the I, NFC. I, I, hey, Am I right? It, it, yes, you, where you're heading. You never, you never I know. I know that inflection. No, no, Ooh. Skip, no. Did no. you hear that, Joy? I heard bandwagon. What, what, you got? What, 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 what happened to the Nick Foles love? It's gone? So you're out on Foles? Well, what was his nickname? First of all, I'm trying to ask, why you got on Dolphins colors? Uh, it, it, first of all, this is not Dolphins Close colors enough. by any measure. Close enough. That, that is on not, TV, that is not it projects as Dolphin colors. What do you mean? Why, why, why are you backing up right now? What's, what happened to Nick Foles love? 
Man. Is did, you, did you see him in that last game? <laughs> Foles Gold. Told you. What was his nickname? I ain't got, he, he ain't getting no nickname now. Philadelphia or something? Philadelphia. <laughs> Throw them Foles. Throw them Foles. <laughs> no mercy. The Jaguars beat the Bills in a defensive struggle yesterday, 10-3. Blake Bortles had more rushing yards than passing yards in the game, and now the Jags head to Pittsburgh. Jacksonville beat the Steelers 30-9 earlier this season, and in that game, Ben Roethlisberger threw a career-high five interceptions. And last week, he said he wants to face the Jags in the playoffs to make up for that performance. We're joined by former NFL and UCLA head coach Jim Mora. Welcome back. Welcome. Back. Thank you. Thanks for having me Good back. Good to have you. How much of a shot do you give the Jags against the Steelers? You know, I have to give them a shot just because of how well their defense is playing. But if Blake Bortles can't play better than he did yesterday and they can't move the ball any better than they did yesterday and they're going to Pittsburgh, a team that is motivated, a guy like Ben who has playoff experience, they're playing at home, it's a, it's a shot, but I don't think it's a great shot. But we know this league, anything can happen. And uh, I'm a big fan of Jacksonville's defense. I love the passion, the enthusiasm, the youthfulness, the confidence that they play with. But going to Pittsburgh against a very motivated and rested team that's getting Antonio Brown back, it, it's, it's a tall task. Miles mm. Jack, you coached at I UCLA, did. and you have raved about him. Rave a little more. Well, I've known him since he was 12 years old in Georgia when I was head coach of the Falcons. Yeah. <laughs> we went to Seattle. He came to Seattle. He is one of the most athletic, unique individuals. He could probably – skip – you're going to tell me I'm crazy. You've done it before. He could probably start at running back in the National Football League. That's how talented he was. He was, as a freshman at UCLA, he was the offensive and defensive freshman of the year in the Pac-12. Mm. Uh, but, and then Jalen Ramsey. I sat next to Jalen Ramsey at the draft. And I'm looking at Jalen Ramsey. I'm saying, there's no way that guy's a cornerback. <laughs> there's no way that guy Huge. is a cornerback. I mean, just, you know, just, a, I mean, a he... beautiful-looking athlete yes. and mm -hmm. smart in the way he plays. I mean, it's going to be break a, on the ball. The, oh, the yes. my God. And, and the break on the ball and then the way he tipped yeah. it and the athleticism mm -hmm. to catch mm -hmm. it and get his hand under. Yeah. And uh, I love the enthusiasm mm -hmm. they play with. And I, I give them a shot. I don't think it's a great shot. I think the odds are against them. But, you know, nothing's going to surprise you in this league. Mm. This is why we love football so much. Because, really, no matter how big of an underdog a team is, on any given day, anything can happen. Your team's playing the Warriors you got to beat them four times. <laughs> You're not feeling really good about that. No. But in football, one injury, and then what? Boom. Mm -hmm. And we, we see that all the time. And I agree with you, Coach. If Blake Bortles thinks he's going to throw – because now the first time they beat him 30-9, to nine, Blake Bortles was 8 of 14 for 95. Well, he's, he looked yesterday like he was throwing darts mm -hmm. instead of – instead that, of sl he needs to – he's got a, some – I know, but – they won't win if he throws yeah. darts. Mm -hmm. I don't care how well their defense plays. They don't need him to win, well. but they – they look, can he, can he make the one throw? Can he make one or two throws? Because I believe their defense will keep him in the game. I it believe will. that too. All things being equal. You guys know this. To keep – to hold a team in the National Football League, I don't care if it's Tyrod Taylor, who's a young guy developing, mm -hmm. and Buffalo on the road. To hold a team to three points is incredibly – it just doesn't happen much. And you, so you, you know. Yeah, I know. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, they, they get in the end zone. Mm -hmm. And some, some things the happened there zone. at the end of the first half. Yep. You know, they had a shot to score. Yep. But they didn't. They did. They didn't. And, uh, you know, so you, you, you just can't, you can't discount Jacksonville going up there and having a great shot if their defense can continue to play with that great confidence that they've mm -hmm. developed lately. So Joy Taylor from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is not happy with me, but I am already leaning toward picking Jacksonville Are you really? to pull this off. Tell them why, though. Tell, tell the truth why. why. Well, easier path for New England. I don't know that that's true. I, seriously, from my heart, <laughs> that is not true. That this would scare me as a Brady fan because this team is serious on defense. They had four Pro Bowlers, one of which was not Miles Jack. Yep. But the two corners, Boye with Jalen, they're – Pro Bowlers, Malik Jackson, you, you know him well. I, and, and you can't, and Calais. You, you, and you, you can't minimize the the uh, the momentum and the confidence, right? They, they you, got, you get to this point in the league and a team's in, in the they, in the season and a team's playing with this much confidence. I'm great watching them yesterday happen. and I'm seeing five freakish athletes on the defensive side that Minnesota doesn't have that much. Minnesota is really well coached and they're very good at what they do, and you know them well too, but. But this team is, 
is like transcendent where, where you've got, they're, they're just starting to come of age mm -hmm. and maybe they're not quite ready for this because maybe they took Ben by surprise the first time, but he threw it five times to them and two of them got housed. Yep. And that's not going to happen again. But he's on the record. Ben was last week. I want Jacksonville. Okay. Well, he's getting them. That's what and I'm saying. <laughs> you know, something it's like when Matt Hasselbeck went out there and said, "We want the ball. And we're going to score." Correct. That's a good. You better be good careful. Analogy. What you and say. remember, Mike Tomlin broke all the coaching rules that even you might not break at your wildest moment. <laughs> but about what was it? It's like six weeks ago, he told Tony Dungy, "It's going to come down to us in New England. That's what it is. It's either going to be at their place or our place. So we're going to decide that at our place in the regular season." What happens in between? Uh, I don't know. So Jacksonville <laughs> is saying, "Well, you've already booked." It man, you've already booked your travel up to, to Foxborough, right? So, this is just a foregone conclusion. We're going to come with no pressure on us and with the quarterback who, and I'm not a fan, but he is capable of having a better game than yesterday. Well, because he ran he the did ball it. well, you he know, ran and it really he, he well. made plays running the football he, he, when he had to in the second he, half. He had a and 20 yard run and a 12 and a 12, and that basically tilted the playing field for them. The, but, Shannon, I, I again, I watched him a lot during the regular <laughs> season. I saw three times, and you could say a oh, competition, but twice was against Indy, but he had four 300-plus yard passing games. Well, he's got some of it. He's 6'5", 240 with some ability. And he's got – he can't make anybody miss, but he can run – I think he ran 4'9 at the combine. Mm -hmm. He's probably a 5 flat now. <laughs> okay, I give you that. But still, his QBRs in these games were high, and it, it gave him a QBR above 50, which is better than Mariota's or Cam's or Jared Goff's or Cousins, Jameis or Derek Carr. So he, he's not awful. He's not awful. He's capable. Like, they, they, they put the ball in his hands on fourth and goal at the end of the third quarter and said, you're going to throw it to somebody named Ben Koyak, who I'd never even heard of. He caught five balls all year. And he hit him right in the hands for a touchdown. From one yard away, you could say, but they did say, you do this. The, right? The thing that they, makes Jacksonville so good is that they don't have to blitz defensively. Right. They got that front four with Malik Jackson and Calais Campbell up front. But when they do blitz, they get home. Whew. They don't blitz often. Because they don't have to. They got two guys outside in Fowler and in, 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 in Gakwe. Yeah, and then they, they got do. the two big horses in the middle. Whew. They got Tevin Smith on one side. They got Jack. Yeah. They Ooh. athletic across Ooh. the board. Right. They got Cor Rams and Boyer. They and got listen, Gibson and Church. Well, they, the can biggest, play, yeah. Yeah, they can play man and double guys. Or they can play zone and sit off. And they can get pressure with four. When you, and you know that. When you can get pressure with four as a secondary coach is in, in the coverage element, which is going to be huge against Pittsburgh because yes. they throw the ball well. Yeah. They're going to have to mix and match, but if they can get there with four, it's going to give them a huge advantage. And listen, Le'Veon's going to have a hard time. He's not going to run wild on this grunt right. group, you know, that front seven. It'll be so, tough. And that's what you do. You tell them, hey, the ball's going to come out quick. We, the ball's got to come out quick. Yeah. Well, I'm still picking Pittsburgh, but I love what Jacksonville's doing, and I, I love what Doug Marone's doing, I, and the youthfulness of that defense. And you're right. Bortles, uh, young guy, yesterday's first playoff game. Hopefully he got some of the bugs out. Maybe he'll rear back and throw Maybe. it this week a little bit. There's I don't know. Like this no anymore. pressure yeah. on this Steve, Bru hey. if that was Brunel, Mark Brunel, I got the Jags. Hey. That's Blake Bortles. I had I'm the Jags in that game up at Denver that time. Pittsburgh. No, you did When didn't. was that, 97 or when was it? You know what it was. Well, it was 96. Well, all the pressure's on the Steelers, but you got to imagine Ben's not going to play as badly as he did I would the first think time not. around. Let's just hope he doesn't give 19 targets to Antonio Brown. <laughs> no mercy. The Falcons beat the Rams on the road Saturday night. Matt Ryan hit Julio Jones for a touchdown in the fourth quarter to put the game away. Atlanta is the sixth seed, but are favored next week on the road against the Eagles. Philly is the number one seed, but has struggled on offense with Nick Foles. This is the first time a number one seed has ever been an underdog at home in their first playoff game. We're joined once again by Jim Mora. Jim, how much of a shot do you give the Falcons to win the NFC? I think they will win the NFC. Uh -huh. So there's the shot uh -huh. that I think. And That's I think a big that, shot. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm a Falcons fan. I coach there. Uh, you know, Dan Quinn. I hired him into the NFL as my quality control guy at uh, San Francisco. Um, he's done an amazing job. But the, the way they can run the ball, or they did run the ball the other night. Now, the Rams have struggled this year against the run, but they were able to run the ball when they had to, especially in the third and fourth quarter. Yep. Uh, having a guy like Matty Ice, who is experienced in these situations, as you said, having those amazing receivers that they have, uh, the energy they play with on defense, Going into Philly will be difficult because of the weather, but Dan is the type of guy that will get these guys in the right frame of mind to go in there and have a great game. And then they'll probably end up in Minnesota, 
And uh, now I got some split allegiance because I've got, you know, I've got a bunch of guys on the on the Dude. Vikings, Anthony mm -hmm. Barr and Eric Kendricks and Kevin, Mc all these other guys. But uh, you got I, Tack McKinley on Tack. I've got Tack. At, that's right at Atlanta. But the way Atlanta is playing right now, they are playing with the confidence of Jacksonville with a quarterback and a, a and a, an experienced offense that can take them all the way to the to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I agree. I'm picking them. I, I picked them Saturday, uh, uh, to beat the Rams. I'm picking them to beat Philly. Um, I agree with you. I think they have an excellent chance because they have the reigning MVP. They have two receivers. I mean, Hulu Joe is a monster. We know that. But some Muhammad Sanu is better than people. He's a great number two. He is. They can run the ball with, with Freeman and Coleman. Mm -hmm. They really have no weakness offensively. Give that defense credit. Oh. That was the number one scoring offense in football. It was. And they held them to 13 points mm -hmm. at home. Now, they they – Took Gurley out. Gurley only had 14 carries. He had 101 yards. Why he didn't have 24 carries or 30 carries? Bad well, idea. they didn't have the ball. I mean, they couldn't get him the ball a lot. Yeah. First of all, yeah. and then when you're playing from behind, it changes things. They and turned then, the ball over. And then sometimes young coaches, um, you know, that inexperience maybe shows up a little. And I think Sean McVay is unbelievable. Yeah. Once he's my ball boy in San Francisco, so he'll I have be coach of the some year. history. And he should be. He's done an amazing job. But you know. Todd broke some runs late in the, or in the second half, but early they couldn't get him going. But you got to give credit to the to the Falcons' defense. Once again, like we were talking about with Jacksonville, they can rush four, and they can put pressure on you. Mm -hmm. And they've got Trufant, and they've got a vet, yeah. I mean, they can get after you. And in and sure, we talk about their offense and Julio and Muhammad and all those guys, but that defense is playing fantastic right now. Mm. So, Shannon Sharp, mm -hmm. have I heard you once again jump to another bandwagon? Because last week you were picking the Saints to win the NFC side of the bracket. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. now you're picking the Falcons? I can see that happening. You can see it happening. <laughs> yeah. What is it? <laughs> Which is it? This man, he just plunged. He just said, here, what? they're going to win the NFC. But can we get past Philly? We got Philly's going to be cold. That, that bomb cyclone. We, we, but, but you're a we now because you used to live in Atlanta, so now you're back. Yeah, and, and, and Matt, and Matt, you know, oh, Matt about to be a dad, a, you know. Mm -hmm. Matt's not going to be affected by the cold. Let me tell you a funny story. In 2004, yeah, Philly. we go up to uh, to Philly to play in the NFC Championship game when I'm the head coach of the Falcons, and I tell all the guys, I said, we're not wearing sleeves. Nobody's saying the word cold. I love Michael Vick. I mean, I love him to death. No matter what people think, I, I'm a fan of Michael Vick. Right. We walk out on the field, and Mike's got sleeves on. His hands, he comes up, he goes, Jim, I'm freezing. And I said, oh, we're in trouble today. Yeah. Matt is not, it's Matty Ice. Yeah. Matt's not going to do this. Yeah, mm. yeah Skip. Mm. I mean, Matt. He, <clears throat> well, jump on the bandwagon. The Just he, go ahead and plunge. He, I want to hear it. He's supposed to have two Lombardis, but he let one slip okay. away. Right. He's going to get that one this year for the two. Ba you know, he's going to be a daddy. Okay, so twins. you have now <laughs> switched your pick to Atlanta. Is that what you heard? I mean, it sounds it sounds I, I like you've been uh, on the Philly yes. bandwagon yes, all year. Yes, I see a big yes <laughs> coming out of your mouth. I, uh, Skip, you don't feel good with what you saw in New Orleans I, I running the football but yesterday. I, am not going I mean, to you can just off. have some courage of your conviction and yeah. stick with your pick. Now, now you go, was he a Philly wrong. guy or a Saints guy all year? He was a Philly guy Philly. all year, and then was, going was, into the playoffs, he's he a Saints guy, and now I guess he was. Let's just say this: between Minnesota, Philadelphia, the Falcons, and the Saints. Those are four great football yeah. teams. Yeah! Great. He's a front but, well, that's okay, you know. Well, better he's than me. That. He's got a yellow jacket. He can do a little bit of that. But those yeah. are four great teams. I don't like teams. being in the back. I want to and, be in the front one. And two of them, two of them have great quarterbacks with experience, and two of them don't. Hmm. And this is a quarterback-driven league, Man, right? I, and you've so, got to play great defense. Which is why I'm going to have the courage of my convictions, because after my Dallas Cowboys fell out of the tournament, they should have been in, but they weren't. <laughs> I'm, I you picked the, the Eagles? No, I picked the Saints. I told you yeah, last yeah. week. I picked the Saints, and I didn't love the way they played, but I did like they the way won, Drew, Drew Brees played Drew really Brees well and, at a high level, yeah. high level. And so, a fearless coach. I yeah. mean, Sean, you know, you, all you have to do is go back to the last Super Bowl when he onside. I mean, the guys, mm -hmm. you watch him on the sidelines, his demeanor, mm -hmm. confident, tough, fearless. Arrogant. Uh, going for it on fourth down. Yeah. I loved what he said after the game, you know. Yeah. We went yeah. for it, didn't work out. Fortunately, yeah. they intercepted Fortunately, it. they intercepted, but they did. It was a bad idea, <laughs> but, but they did. They got him off the hook. Yeah. So, I'm going with the Saints to upset Minnesota at Minnesota, right. and then guess what? Your Falcons will have to come again to the that yeah. house yeah. in yeah. New Orleans, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. 
You good with that? And they're going to make amends for oh, what they should have been. They been back to back. Yeah. Here's what I do <laughs> love about the Falcons that I did not love last year. I was shaky on their defense. They did not have Trufant or Adrian Claiborne last yeah. year against New England, yeah. right? Yes. Well, those are – especially Trufant, that's a big loss. And Adrian Claiborne just – well, we don't punish me. If, if you let Adrian Claiborne get one sack, no, there's no. a good chance he he's going to get six. He's going to get yeah. more than one. Yeah, especially if it's Chaz Green trying to block him on the left side. Yeah, I'm sorry. Or Byron Bell. You know? Don't yeah. fault Adrian Claiborne. Yeah. You should fault the, the Cowboys for not giving Chaz well, Green some I, help. I, I do, but the point is that their defense is carrying them to me more than Matty Ice is. Yeah. He's playing okay now, but he's not playing quite Let at me the give MVP you the old, level. It's the, old, it's the old cliche. They're playing complementary football. They're running the ball well. Yeah, they are. Matt's taking care of the football, and they're playing really good defense and special teams. Yep. And they've got momentum. And they've got Charlie, confidence. Charlie they've got a Weiss great head said, coach. His son's coach on yep. the team. But nobody has more weapons than these guys do, than I mean, Atlanta does. I don't yeah, know how Atlanta. you cover those, those two guys. I mean, they're, they're – they're gigantic, athletic, yeah, Muhammad's a new, strong well, both of them, men. I mean, like you six know? three and a half, I mean, he two looks, twenty-five. Yeah, he, he's gig- he just looks like a just a. Megatron. Matt didn't play basketball. He was twenty of twenty-one of thirty for two uh, two eighteen two touchdowns. But when you watch the Falcons play defense, they play only yeah. a handful of coverage. Do you realize you have to go back? They eight? play three yeah, D. They play three D. A bunch of different ways. Yep. It's the old Seattle stuff. Yep. And they right. they understand it inside now. Yep. So you have to go back 18 games with Matty Ice to find the last time he had a three touchdown game. So he's but got he a lot of But he didn't need twos, that. Okay. See, but that's who he is now. But no, okay? no, that's who he needed he to, be, to be right. to beat the Rams on Saturday yeah. night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now he might need to do a little bit more. I doubt it. How many that's times did they run the ball? 39. There, how many times does that happen in the NFL? Mm. 39. See? I thought you loved the Eagles. I do. No, 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 hey, no, no, no. He no. did when they had Carson. When they had walking to him, who would have been the MVP? Limp it to him wins. Stop <laughs> it. The problem is, Nick Foles, you, you're underestimating. He played that one game against New Orleans in the playoffs after the 2013 season. Go look at what he did. I, 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 it was pretty good. I, but I came back to a little more present, and I watched him against the Cowboys. Okay. Yeah. Oh, now you're really hurting him. Cowboys do that to everybody. No, they don't. <laughs> no. Not it's Jerry Sean Gall. Lee. Not you're, Jerry Gall. You're dealing with Sean Lee. Stop it, Well, Skip. you are. You know you are. You see what Russell Wilson did? To who? Cowboys defense with Sean Lee. I, I saw what Dallas did to Dallas when they had it first and goal at the three-yard line and didn't. Is Dallas playing this weekend? Yeah. Well, you spent a lot of time on Dallas here, here Skip. They didn't hand it to Ezekiel Elliott one time in four tries? Wow. That's what happened. That's interesting. You know, or I'd be having a different conversation because the Falcons this... wouldn't even be in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> I just want all this Falcons love on the record. Yeah. If Philly somehow pulls this off, you're going to be right Leo. back on Leo. it. Leo. Who Leo. Leo. Foles, oh, Philadelphia, yeah. going to be right back on it. The dirty birds. Oh, I forgot. Dirty Change your mind. No mercy. Last week, ESPN reported major turmoil in the Patriots organization between Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and Robert Kraft. The three issued a joint statement on Friday saying the report was exaggerated and inaccurate. On Saturday, Brady discussed his relationship with Belichick and Kraft. Let's take a listen. I characterize my relationship with Mr. Kraft. He's a great person, man. He's been like a second father to me in so many ways. I have a great relationship with coach Belichick we've worked together for 18 years there's no coach I'd rather play for and I've loved my experience here I certainly couldn't be the player I am today without playing for such a great coach so I see these as all positive things we're joined by Fox NFL analyst Greg Jennings welcome Greg good Good morning good morning good morning what's your take on the situation this is interesting. It's interesting that we're even talking about something outside or other than football when it comes to the New England Patriots, specifically this time of year. Um, it, they keep a really close mm-hmm. camp, quiet mm-hmm. camp. Nothing ever really gets leaked out. Nothing ever is the topic of discussion other than football. Uh, and so when I look at this, I say, I have to raise an eyebrow to it because there, there has to be something going on to where these stories are getting, get being, being put out there. Uh, of course, they're going to send the message of everything is great. This is, this, is who they, this is who they are. This is what they do. This is what you have to do. The focus is winning games, winning playoff games, and getting another championship there in New England. So I get all of that. What, what, we, what we've seen over the course of this year has been very uncharacteristic of the New England Patriots with Jimmy Garoppolo's situation, with uh, 
the lack of really uh, command that Bill Belichick has had over the course of his time there with the organization of running it. Mm -hmm. It's been, as we've seen, this has not been his number one choice with Garoppolo, with everything that's kind of going on. This has not been the way he typically runs things with holding on to players, whether it's Tom Brady or who, whoever. He likes to make sure that he has the next guy in place to move on. He plays chess like the best chess players in, in the world. He's not going to make a move spontaneously or instinctively. He has already thought it out, planned it out, and is going to move that way. And this has not been what he's been accustomed to. And so I think there is some tension there. Uh, I think they can definitely, they, I, when you say a riff, I don't know about a riff, uh, but there's definitely some working tension in the New England camp uh, because of all of what has transpired and because of the lack of control that Belichick has been able to have when it comes to Brady and his future. We all know what he's brought to, their, to that organization and what he means. But at the end of the day, Belichick isn't about an individual player. He's about the team. And so when I look at all of what's going on, we know the relationship between Tom Brady and Robert Kraft has always been great. It's always been great. And from the eye, the relationship between all three of them has always been great. But when you start talking about running the organization a certain way and you, you're not allowing Belichick to do that, he's not for that. So I think there is something there to be, to be lending an ear to. I'm not surprised because it's what they do. They come on, everybody put on a brave face. A brave face. Tom Brady says he has a great relationship with Mr. Kraft. He does. Oh, he loves playing for Coach Belichick. There's no other coach he'd rather play for. But I believe there is some tension. Because, Skip, this is the first time in 18 years that exactly. Mr. Kraft usurped his, his mm -hmm. head coach. Because, and this is what we know, when you're making decisions about these type quarterbacks mm -hmm. or the, uh, in the, another situation, the Kaepernick situation, that goes to the owner. Yep. This goes to the owner. Mm -hmm. When they made the decision to go with Steve Young as opposed to Joe Montana, that went upstairs. That wasn't just a head coach. That went upstairs. Sure. When they made the move to go to Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. from Brett Favre, that went upstairs. That wasn't Mike McCarthy. Yep. Skip, they traded Jimmy. This is what we know about Coach Belichick. If you follow this game and you study the New England Patriots, this man will leave no stone unturned in his preparation. He prepares his team for every situation. Mm -hmm. So when it comes up, they're not the least bit surprised. You mean to tell me, Coach Belichick, was willing to trade a backup that he believed was going to be the bridge to the future from uh, uh, Tom Brady to Jimmy Garoppolo for the future. You're going to trade him midseason mm. when you got a Super Bowl title. Now, Tom Brady gets hurt. I mean, and, and you're out of this thing, and Garoppolo, I get it. Skip, you're not trading Jimmy Garoppolo during the season. Someone gave him an ultimatum. This is you will. Mm -hmm. He got to go. Yep. Coach Belichick ain't t trading no Jimmy Garoppolo when you could have traded him in the offseason and got probably two first-rounders or a first and a third at, wor at worst-case scenario. You're going to trade him during the season? And you trying to tell me of something, because think about it, Skip. There's no question in my mind that at worst-case scenario, the Eagles would be equally as favorite if they had Carson Wentz. They dropped him all the way down. They, they blow the Falcons down. Falcons are favorite. So we know what a quarterback represents, especially in the playoffs. And Coach Belichick was willing to trade the guy he thought was going to be the bridge for him into the future. Traded in midseason. Mm -hmm. Not negotiated. We'll take a second rounder for Jimmy Garoppolo. Normally, teams call you. Mm -hmm. What you want for Jimmy? Hey, I give you two, I'm going to give you $500 for that mug, Skip. Mm. Okay. There's something going on here. Because, Skip, all, of all the things they could have said, how did they know that Brady was upset about get, not getting Patriot of the Week? Of all the things, how do people know? Everybody don't even know. A lot of times people don't even know that they give these awards out. Mm -hmm. Why would it be up? Oh, we never had. Oh, so, so let me get this right. You had no meeting. There was no four-hour meeting about Jimmy Garoppolo. So Coach Belichick just said, okay, we trained Jimmy. Really, Mr. Kraft? Now we know you know. But now don't insult our intelligence up here. We know Coach Belichick. Coach Belichick is too methodical. He's too late. Everything is step by step Calculate. by step. 
And you want us to believe, Skip, that all of a sudden Coach Belichick woke up one morning, said, you know what, I'm trading Jimmy Garoppolo, the guy that he thought was going to be the bridge to the future. Mm -hmm. No way, no how. But they did exactly what I thought they would do, put on this brave face and say, kumbaya, mm -hmm. kumbaya. Mm -hmm. In other words, come by here, my Lord, come by here. Mm -hmm. But we know that's not the case. But I tell you what they will do, they'll go out there and play the tails off on mm -hmm. Saturday, and you're not careful, they'll be hosting up a Lom mm -hmm. the Lombardi Trophy again. That is correct. So... Very predictably, and, and I'll, <laughs> I'll go to commendably, we just saw the New England Patriots do what they do best off the football field. They close ranks. They're all pro at closing ranks. Yep. They're all pro at practicing <laughs> damage control, as in united we stand. Yep. Put pride aside, united we stand. None of this will get out. We will close all leaks from this point forward. And to your point, Robert Kraft did an interview that I think ran Sunday on Monday morning quarterback with Peter King in which he just flat out denied that meeting took place. So he's saying that the ESPN report by Seth Wickersham has one big lie in the middle of it, one big fabrication. Baloney. I'm sorry. There are too many details. I'm, I'm going to put my money on Seth Wickersham's Absolutely. piece because he has detail about two weeks before the draft that Belichick – met with the owner, and it went on for hours that, that went half a day. And, it, and he even had the detail that Belichick had to push back a bunch of appointments because it went on and on and on. And in that meeting, says Seth Wickersham in his reporting, a clear mandate was delivered to Bill Belichick. You will trade Jimmy Garoppolo, and you will look for the next quarterback in the draft. Period. End of story. An order was issued. Mm -hmm. And that it left Belichick, according to Seth Wickersham, angry and disillusioned. Those are the two words. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Kraft. I got to go there. I'm going to lean this way. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to take this to my bank. And I'm going to say what I said on Friday once again, that Bill Belichick reacted angry and disillusioned by sabotaging the franchise going forward. You're going to make me trade him? Watch what I do. I'm going to give him away to a, a young man I have now mentored, Kyle Shanahan, because I liked the father so much, and the father stood up for me during Spygate. Correct. Mike Shanahan, for whom you played. Yep. And at the Combine, there was the detail from Seth Wickersham that Bill met with Kyle Shanahan for hours to talk about what went wrong in the Super Bowl. Let me show you what happened. That's outrageous. It's out of bounds. It's out of line. But that's what the report was. Yeah. So in the end, Mr. Kraft privately... How would he know that, though, Skip? Well, uh, Nobody else knew that. Mm. No one else knew that Coach Belichick met with Kyle Shanahan. Exactly. I told you this story smacked of coming from Belichick's camp or maybe even straight from Bill himself. And mm -hmm. Maybe second or third hand from Bill you himself. You ain't here from me. Yep. But uh, let me tell but you what let happened. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> because I'm going to buy it. I'm going to take it to my personal Absolutely. bank. All of the above. And... In the end, the, the guy who Robert Kraft should be furious with is the head coach because he turned on him, and then he, he'd already given away Jacoby Brissett, basically, for a Philip Dorsett, who's been he was a bust in Indy, and he's been pretty much a bust for yeah. the Patriots, right? Yeah. Okay? That's a quarterback now, and I'm not saying he's a starter, but I think he's a pretty quality backup yeah. quarterback, and those don't grow on trees, so you, you just gave him away for Philip Dorsett. Really? Head up. Wow, interesting. Who trading who train hit quarterback's head up? Okay. You don't do that in this league. And, <laughs> and if you want to blame a story on somebody, I think if you read between all the lines and all the tea leaves, it feels like it came mostly from the head coach. So, I, And I don't blame Tom Brady for saying publicly, we have a great relationship. Well, that means a great working relationship. Because exactly. they always have. They have no personal relationship that I've ever heard of. Right. Okay? So... Do, do, Again, I called it predictable and commendable because they're going to just close ranks and deny, deny, deny right. because they, they're the favorites, man. What, what, what are you going to do? Right. They understand yeah. what their goal is yeah. and their focus is right now. But what's interesting about all of this is you talk about a coach and an organization that has never really shown uh, ego uh, or who has never really allowed players to have yeah. personal egos to trump. True team, mm -hmm. and you look at what Belichick has done, this is ego. It this is. is his ego. This is him saying, look, this is what I've done for you as, as an owner. As, this is what I've created. 
and this is now you're trying to tell me how to run things? And we always said mm -hmm. we wouldn't let personal feelings get involved. Uh huh. Mr. Kraft let his personal relationship with Tom Brady get involved mm -hmm. a business decision. He did. Coach Belichick always would do business decisions. But here, here's one, Skip. How about this here? If Josh McDaniels doesn't take one of these jobs that's available, mm. I can see him coaching the New England Patriots okay, next year and Coach Belichick walking okay, away. That's possible. And going to get that quarter of a bill. Because if John Gruden got $100 million, mm, somebody yeah. about to get <laughs> Coach Belichick a quarter of a bill. You were correct about that. And he has earned the right to go elsewhere and prove he can win without Tom Brady. I say good luck to him, but he's earned the right to try. But it's going to cost you some compensation. Okay, all right. Well, First rounder. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Patriots are a dynasty, but what, what, what are all the cliches? Rome fell from within. Yeah. The trees can't grow mm -hmm. to the sky. Mm -hmm. you know? The Patriot way. Mm -hmm. Oh, Belichick said it my way. <laughs> it, do you, you know what? what? Do, you, way. do you know what the Patriot was, yeah. way was before I got <laughs> right. here? Yep. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one.